John Fuhr once commented that when a John Munn went into the forest, traveling to different caves, mountains, he always went with a purpose. There was a reason for his going. It wasn't that he simply wanted to change scenery or have a good time. He either knew that it would be a good place to meditate, or there were people there or beings there who might benefit from his teaching. Only if there was a reason would he go. The reason I mention this is because tomorrow some of you are going to go up to the mountain. spend the day up in the forest there. It's good to think about why you're going, what you hope to accomplish, what you hope to gain from it, and what you hope to help up there. There are lots of lessons that can be learned from being out there. One that the Buddha noted was that when you go in the forest and you simply have the perception that you're out in the wilderness. Your mind is very different from when it has the perception of being in society. He says there's the village perception and the human being perception. And then there's the wilderness perception. In the village and human being perceptions, all the affairs of the people you've had to deal with, all the issues that go around living in a village. And even though we here, live here in a monastery, there's a kind of a village here. So one thing you can notice is how your mind changes, the level of disturbance in your mind between being here where you have responsibilities and going up there where the responsibilities are very different. And it's primarily a pr difference in perception. If you wanted to, you could carry all the village issues up the mountain with you. But that wouldn't be taking advantage of the opportunity to see how much difference perception can make. So it's not just going to a different place, but it's having a different perception of yourself in your surroundings. This is a classic case of bhava. It's based on a perception. In this case, there's a desire to get up and let down some of the burdens and the responsibilities of being here in the monastery. So there's a lesson you can learn right there, the power of perception or the, over the level of stress or lack of stress in your mind. When you've learned that power, bring it back here. We live in a world nowadays where wilderness is composed of little islands surrounded by civilization. In the past it wasn't that way. Civilization was islands, and the wilderness was the sea. And you want to bring some of that wilderness mind back with you. Remind yourself, for example, here at the monastery, we've got chaparral on three sides. There are wilderness animals out there. You know, we live in an orchard. It's an orchard surrounded by wilderness. Try to keep that wilderness penetrating your mind, so that even as you stay here and you've got responsibilities, there's an element of wilderness aerating those responsibilities so they're not quite so heavy. And you can shift that perception at any time. But wilderness isn't all just relaxation and openness. You have to be careful. I mean, there are dangers there. Our romanticized notion of nature tends to forget this. It means you have to be careful. You know, at present, there may not be any wild animals up there that are going to attack you. 
but you have to be careful as you hike around. We've had wilderness trips in the past where people have come back all scarred from being careless. The rocks and other sharp things up there on the, on the, on the mountain don't have the padded cordon, corners that we often expect in society. So we have to be alert. This is the other thing that the wilderness teaches is heedfulness, alertness. And remember, you're not alone up there. In the Buddhist cosmology, there are devas in the trees, devas in the mountains. And just, just as a John Munn, when he went to caves and mountains and forests, would think about the other beings there. He would chant for them. He would spread goodwill. So that he was actually bringing something to them. And he'd often have to be careful not to offend them. There are stories of his going into caves where monks who had been in the caves before had offended the, the resident devas by their lack of circumspection, by general lack of manners. So keep that in mind as well. What energy are you taking up there? Do you know the manners of the forest? One of the manners of the forest is you're always very clean and neat. That story I told today about a John Lee and the banana grove. His comment on not leaving banana peels lying around, that applies to all kinds of situations in the forest. Not just banana groves that appear through psychic power. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you think. We had a weird incident years back up in the north room of the Grand Canyon. We'd gone down to the section of Paraswampet's spring, which is a natural spring in this lovely meadow surrounded by spruce, pines, aspen. And as we're driving down, the, the guy who was driving, who was a, was a real estate appraiser, happened to notice one little corner of the meadow that was especially pretty. And he thought to himself, she would be really nice to build a house there. He immediately had this sense that there was a presence there that said, no, go away. We got down to the spring, and it's a spring that's been covered up by cement to keep the water clean. And there's a little cement trap door on the top. It takes one or two people just to lift it up so you can get to the water. And someone had left the trap door open, and a crow had gotten into the spring and died, which meant that we couldn't use the water in the spring at all. So you have to have manners when you go in the forest. Make your presence there a gift. So when you go up, you can chant a little bit, spread thoughts of goodwill. Mo walk mindfully through the forest. Walk with alertness through the forest. Open your eyes to what you see around you. Years back when I was very first staying with a John Fu, and meditating a week. And one of his students came and wanted to invite him to see a, an orchard over in Jandaburi, which bordered on some forest, had a nice creek running through it. And so we all went, and I was sitting and meditating at the edge of the creek. And John Fu, who was well, maybe about 20, 30 yards away, threw a stone into the creek to splash me opened my eyes and just noticed he was walking around looking at the trees. Suddenly realized that's what he wanted me to do. Not just sit there with my eyes closed, look. And John Lee tells of the many lessons you learn by looking in the forest. How trees survive, how the animals survive. The main lesson that John Lee picked up from the forest was heedfulness. You have to be very watchful. You can't be complacent. And to survive in difficult situations, you want to be quiet. When you go to a new place, always be quiet. Watch. See what you can learn. If you go in with the attitude you already know everything you need to know, 
And this applies to all areas of life. All the lessons that are there just waiting to be picked up get ignored. So you would go both to give and to receive, to contemplate. The mountain had a fire recently. Look at the ravages of the fire as you go up, and you notice that already there are some plants that are beginning to, to sprout. The parts of the mountain are beginning to look green again, but huge parts of the mountain are still black. There's a lesson in karma right there. Some of your actions are things that you can quickly recover from. Others leave deep scars for long periods of time. A lesson in heedfulness. So look around, see what kind of lessons you can learn when you're up there. Make it a, a Dharma exploring trip. Not just a picnic, as I heard one of you say. Use your ears, use your eyes, and keep your mind alert for the lessons of the forest. In the National Parks, they have a sign that says, you know, take only pictures and memories, leave only footprints. Well, our attitude is go out there, give what you can of your goodwill, and bring back what lessons you can learn for training the mind. <laughs>